May God's light and love be with you all. Hi everyone, welcome to Sunday School. I hope you're doing well and that you've had a wonderful week. Eric is on a well-deserved vacation. We hope he's having a great time off. And we want to thank him for all the kind, thoughtful, and loving things he does for us all the time. He'll be back with us next week. We're still in the book of 1 Kings, so that's why I decided to wear some kingly attire once again. Now down the road, when we get back to in-person Sunday school, you'll have the opportunity to uh, try on the costumes in the Children's Worship Center as you have in the past. I know that in the pre-pandemic era, some of you loved putting on this crown. How does it look? Anyway, so in honor of all of you, I proudly wear it today. Today and next Sunday, our stories from the Bible for Children from Good Books will focus on two important prophets in the Old Testament. First, Elijah, and next week, Isaiah. And then, what is a prophet? Here are two simple definitions. One, someone who declares publicly a message that he or she believes has come from God. And two, a person who predicts the future. In the first story today, it says the prophet Elijah listened very carefully to everything that God had to say. Elijah was a prophet and miracle worker who lived in the northern kingdom of Israel during the reign of evil King Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel. And this was in the 9th century BC, before Christ. Elijah defended the worship of the Hebrew God over that of the Canaanite God called Baal a God whom he considered a false God. During his time as prophet, Elijah challenged and infuriated King Ahab, as you'll hear in the story to come. Before we get to today's quiz, we have photos and videos from last Saturday's fun play day at Kinder Park. And you can see that uh, Lily and Jolene's great grandma Jan is handing out some hats that Eric made for the kids. And they also are wearing some new masks. There's the group with their hats on and their masks staying safe at Kinder Park. There's Jolene on the play structure. And there's Eric and Jolene and taking a swing is, uh, let's see, we've got Lily and Jolene on the swings and Benjamin. There's Benjamin enjoying his ride in the swing. And there's the three of them. Okay, and now we have some check-in videos from Jolene, Sophia, and Lily. Jo uh, Jolene, how are things going? Good. One time I lost a tooth in the car while we were going to McDonald's. Oh my. And it still had the root on and it hurted a little, but I walked through it, it almost hurted, but it was okay. And then the tooth fairy came the first night that we tried. Oh. Good. And I got two fairy coins. Last time I gave the two fairy gifts and she gave me a golden bracelet. Very cool. Thank you. We got Sophia. We haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> this is check in time. Tell us one thing that's been going on. What, uh, one thing that's been going on is I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. A lot of Minecraft? Oh, are and you getting better at it? Yes, I'm actually doing this survival world. It's really, it, um, I actually made it myself. And I started all the way from scratch to having a full diamond, uh, I mean iron, full iron gear. Good. Let me ask you another question. Is it fun getting together with Lily and Jolene here? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna miss it, so. 
All right, good to see you. Bye. So here I am with Lily. It's been a long time. Good to see you. What What do you want to share with everybody? I want to share. I found out that we have. I saw that in a toy book that there was a present that's called a present pet. If you pull off the top, you can only open it once, and little paws come out, and it opens up as a little cute puppy. And his arms go. Oh, <laughs> cool! Is it nice getting together with uh, Sophia and your sister here in the park? Yeah. Okay. Well, nice seeing you. Bye. Here's this week's quiz. When King David died, who took his place as king? Was it A, his friend Saul? B, his son Solomon, or C, his mentor Samuel? Announce your answer. The correct answer is B, his son Solomon. What was the name of the huge special room where the Ark of the Covenant was placed in Solomon's temple? Was it A, Holy of Holies? B, Harmony Hall, or C, Heavenly and Hallowed? Your answer? The correct answer is A, Holy of Holies. Carved from olive wood, the two winged creatures flanking the Ark of the Covenant were called A, Guardians of the Holy of Holies, B, protectors of the temple, or C, cherubim? Your answer? The correct answer is C, cherubim. Thanks for taking the quiz. Elijah the prophet. King Ahab was feasting in his palace when suddenly the curtains of the great hall were flung aside. Ahab looked around, startled. A man stood there. No one knew who he was. No one knew where he came from. The man spoke. The Lord God of Israel, the God whom, I'm, whom I'm, I serve, says there will be no dew nor rain in the years ahead except at my word. Then he was gone. The man's name was Elijah. He was from Gilead beyond the river Jordan. Elijah was a prophet. He listened very carefully to everything that God had to say. King Ahab was furious that his banquet had been interrupted by this strange prophet. Find him, he ordered his soldiers, and bring him back to me. But God spoke again to Elijah, go and hide yourself in the Cherif Ravine east of the Jordan. Drink the water there and I will send the ravens to feed you. So Elijah hid by the brook at Cherith, and each morning and evening the ravens flew down, carrying him bread and meat. Meanwhile, the drought came upon the land. At last, even the brook at Cherith dried up, and Elijah stared sorrowfully as the last drops of water vanished into the cracked earth. A widow and her son. Again, God spoke to Elijah. Go to Zarephath, he said. It was, it was a surprising command. Zarephath was a city in Sidon, beyond Israel, where the people had always followed Baal. But Elijah obeyed. You see a poor woman there, a widow gathering sticks, God told him. I have told her to give you whatever food you need. Sure enough, when Elijah came through the gates of the city, he saw the woman bending low and gathering sticks. Please bring me a little water to drink, he asked, and fetch me some bread. Oh, sir, she answered, by the name of the living God whom you worship, I have no bread, only a handful of flour and a little oil in a jug. This is all that I have left because the terrible drought has ruined our harvest. Now I am gathering these sticks to make a fire and cook a last meal for my little boy and myself before we die of hunger. 
Elijah looked down at her and said, Don't be afraid. First bake a small cake for me, and then one for your son and yourself. Because the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour will not be used up, nor will the jug of oil run dry until I bring rain upon the earth. So the woman ran home, and there she baked and cooked and poured out flour and mixed the oil. Once, twice, many times, it was true. The flour never failed. The oil never ran dry. The God of Israel never failed in his promise. Day after day, the widow looked after Elijah, giving him an upper room to stay in. She fed, fed him and fed herself and her little boy. Then one day, the boy became ill. He was very unwell and the mother was helpless. There was nothing she could do. What's the matter, my son, she whispered. But the boy said nothing. He had stopped breathing. Elijah ran down from his room when he heard the crying. Why have you come to me, man of God, she sobbed. You have brought down punishment on all my sins. Give me the boy, said Elijah. And he took the child in his arms up to his room. Then he fell upon his knees and with tears, he called out to God. Oh Lord, my God, he pleaded. Why have you allowed such a terrible thing to happen to this good woman? Lord, I beg you, give the boy once life once again. God heard his prayer. Suddenly the boy breathed, one breath, then another. Then he was breathing regularly and smiling and opening his eyes. He was climbing off the bed. When the widow saw her little boy running to her, she clutched him and wept, turning to Elijah. Now I know that you are a prophet of God who truly speaks the word of God. Well, I want to start communion by telling you a story. When our daughter was a baby, she received a polar bear for a gift. And Lisa just loved that snuffy bear. She took it everywhere. And that bear became so well loved. It was just tattered and worn out. I had to give it a new nose. I put a little jacket on it to keep it stuffing inside. It was getting fragile. And I decided that just in case the old bear fell apart, that I needed to buy her a replacement. So I got her this new snuffy bear, just beautiful. But Lisa still loved Snuffy. So this bear is still in pristine condition because there was no replacing Snuffy. So what does a bear have to do with communion? Well, God's love is like that, like the love that Lisa had for Snuffy. God doesn't care if we're tired, worn out, tattered. God loves us. When Jesus was gathered with his friends, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. He took the cup, gave thanks, and shared it with his friends. Communion reminds us each week that we are loved and called to show God's love to the world. Now here's a song you all know, one we've sung many times, This is the Day. And This is the Day was inspired by the words from the Old Testament, words from Psalm 118.24. Les Garrett wrote the music for it in 1967, and here to sing it again is our own Mary and Paul Pritchard. So let's join them, I think you know the words, let's join them in singing This is the Day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord
Well, thanks to everyone who participated in today's Sunday School. Thanks for sending photos and videos in and continue to do that. Well, have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.